This right here is not a Stream Deck. Yes, it's my phone. But I'm talking about the grid of buttons on the phone. And with these buttons, I can control OBS. I can run chat commands. I can control the lights in my studio. We've seen apps like this before. This is nothing new, but here's the cool part. This right here is just a page inside of a web browser. And that means I can run this exact same page on literally anything that can run a web browser. Here's a Chromebook, for example, and you can see the exact same thing on my Chromebook. It's just the screen is huge now. You can add this page as a dock inside of OBS, so you have easy access to all your controls. I even have this giant touchscreen behind me on my streams. You can't see it? There it is. Now I have the world's biggest stream deck. I got a Galaxy Watch recently, and I was able to install a web browser, so now I can control OBS right from my watch, which I think would be really cool for people who do like cooking streams. They could like change scenes in OBS. They can control their lights right from their watch. But what's really cool is I can send this exact page as a URL to my Twitch mods so they can control my stream even if they live all the way in one of those Swedish countries like Europe. You know all those times where you forget to change scenes or you forget to put on your background music? You can make a page just for your mods to access so that they can help you run your stream remotely. And the best thing is this tool is completely free. Let me change the background real quick. All right, there we go. I probably should have just made a button on my phone for it. Um, you probably guessed it. This is another one of those streamer bot things. Streamer bot is a tool I've made plenty of videos about. I'm pretty sure if you guys watch my videos, you've heard of streamer bot before. It's a very robust tool for controlling everything about your stream and your studio. Custom channel point rewards, advanced OBS animations, chat commands, and it turns out they have their own web-based tool that's kind of like a stream deck, but you can access it anywhere in the world just from a web browser. Guys, we have a new sponsor this week, Overlays.uno. Man, these tools like putting dots in their name, streamer.bot, overlays.uno. Before you skip this part, I'd give it a chance. This is actually really cool. I'm very excited to show this off. So overlays.uno offers a ton of customizable overlays and widgets that are completely free. So they got things like stream countdowns, tickers, game scores, but they're more than just generic overlays. If you have a stream deck, you can interact with their widgets right from your stream deck. They have like a sports widget and you can change the scores on the widget just by pushing buttons on your stream deck. And if you don't have a stream deck, that's fine because you can scan a QR code and it opens up controls that you can just access from your phone. Some of their widgets have separate controls that you can even just dock inside of OBS so you have easy access to it right there. Have a look at what they have on offer. You'll probably find at least one interesting widget that you can add to your stream. And even if you don't, you can join their Discord and give them feedback. They're always making widgets based on what you guys suggest. Check out overlays.uno in the link down below. No credit card details, no payments required. You have nothing to lose. I'm gonna assume you have some experience with StreamerBot since I seem to mention it in like half my videos. If you've never heard of StreamerBot before, thanks. Thanks for clicking my video instead of watching your 15th moist critical video of the day. I have a beginner's video on setting up StreamerBot here. This is probably the best place to start if you're completely new because you're gonna need this tool for these web decks to work. But once you have StreamerBot up and running, just go into the website and log in. The website is streamer.bot same website where you downloaded the program and just click on the top right and use your Discord account to log in. There's a reason why we're using Discord to log in. You'll see why in a second. Then from there, go into StreamerBot and make sure you have these two settings turned on. So turn on WebSocket server. It's in the server's clients tab and also connect your StreamerBot account. That's in the integrations tab, StreamerBot website, and then you're sweet, you're good to go. Now you're ready to start making your web-based stream deck things. So click on decks in the top right and then create new deck. So this is the page where you're gonna be customizing. I almost had a stroke, but we're gonna keep going. Uh, this is the page where you can customize your deck and add all your buttons. But before you go crazy and make like a million buttons, make sure it turns green up here. That tells you it's connected to StreamerBot. If it's red or yellow, 
you're on your own, buddy, okay? I'm a YouTuber, I'm not a customer service representative. But after that, you can go ahead and start adding your buttons. So just add a new one and in the actions dropdown, you should see a list of all of the actions that you've created inside of StreamerBot. So you do need to go back into the base StreamerBot software and make all your commands first. So let's say for example, you want a button that will change scenes for you. You just create a new action in StreamerBot add a sub action to set the active scene in OBS. Then you come back into your web deck thing and then you add an action, select the action that you made in StreamerBot in the dropdown. And then you can put a label on it so you know what the button does. You just go into the appearance section, type it in here and you can customize the colors, background, whatever you want. You can of course make your own custom icons, which is really cool and even better if you're like me and you're too lazy to make your own icons, you can click here and it will open up a massive page with thousands of icons for you to choose from. And all you gotta do is find the icon that you want, click on the copy button over here, and then paste that icon code into the icon box. And then it just, it just adds the icon there. Just rinse and repeat for all the buttons that you want on your deck. And when you're done, click this button here to launch your deck and you're all set. This URL up here is gonna be where you access your deck from your various devices, whether it be your phone, your tablet, your computer. Hell, if you've got one of those fancy fridges with like the screen on it, you can put like a stream deck on your fridge. Can someone like send me a video of someone putting a deck on their fridge? I just, I wanna see that be a real thing. Literally any device, as long as you can open this URL, you can access your own customized deck from anywhere and control your stream with it. Something that I did was I made this very simple deck page that I've added as a dock inside of OBS. So you just go into docs and add a new custom browser dock. So that way I have access to things like filters or chat commands, but it's all built into OBS and I can just click in it while I'm streaming. Couple things you need to do before you can launch your deck on your phone. First, you need to toggle on this remote connection up here. This is what allows outside devices to access your Stream Deck page. If you don't turn this on, you will only be able to access your Stream Deck pages on the same computer that StreamerBot is running on. So you definitely wanna turn this on if you wanna access it from like a phone or like a fridge. Second, I know some of you creeps out there saw my URL earlier and then now you're trying to access my URL and try to control my stream with it. Doesn't work that way, buddy. The StreamerBot devs were smart enough to think of that situation. You probably don't want everybody to be able to access your Stream Deck page, right? Like, imagine you accidentally show this URL on stream, and then now everybody has access to control your stream. It's chaos, nobody wants that. If you go into your settings into the security tab, you can set the permissions for your deck page. By default, it's set to private, so only you have access to it. And this is why you have to log in with your Discord account. So if you access your deck page on another PC or your phone, it's gonna ask you to sign in with your Discord account first to verify that you're the one accessing the page. But, and here's the fun part, if you wanna give your mods access to a private deck page so that they can control your stream, you just have to search for their Discord account in this drop-down box. Now, you will have to ask your mods to log into StreamerBot at least once. They don't actually have to install StreamerBot or install anything onto their computer. They just need to go to the streamer.bot website and then sign in the same way that you have to sign in at the start of the video. And once they've done that at least once, you can then find their name here and give them access to your deck pages. So if you accidentally leak your Stream Deck deck page and somebody tries to log in and control your stream, it if they don't have permissions in this tab here, they're not gonna be able to press any of the buttons. Or if you want, you can just be a savage and set it to public, and that way, anybody that has access to the URL, they can just control your stream. Okay, so let's circle back to customizing your deck pages because there's a few advanced options that I wanna show you. For one, you can add your own custom arguments to each button. So for example, let's say you want to create five different buttons and all of those buttons run a Twitch ad, but the only difference is the duration of the ad. Instead of creating five actions in StreamerBot that all basically do the same thing, which is run an ad, you can just create one action and and create five different buttons in the deck page that all reference that one action. And then in the arguments page, you just add a duration 
as the argument. If you don't know what arguments are, you can forget about everything I just said, because it's probably too confusing for you. But if you know what arguments are, you can see why that's very useful. Also in general, if you change the button type from action to action with input, you can have the button ask you to enter data for each button press. For example, let's say you want to have a quick button for running a Twitch poll. Well, you can add an input box that asks you to type in the question every time you hit the button and you, you fill in the box, press OK, and then it will create the poll with the question that you typed in. Another idea is you could create a start streaming button, but when you hit the start streaming button, it's gonna ask a yes or no question. So do you wanna continue, yes or no? And then if you press no, it doesn't start streaming. If you say yes, then it does start streaming. So that way you don't accidentally start streaming when you didn't really mean to. Here's a quick example of one of the decks that I personally use. So this is one that I have docked into OBS just for making things easier for me to access. I've got a bunch of buttons for showing and hiding different widgets that are some of my own custom widgets. They're Patreon exclusive. So if you want these widgets, you can just go look at my Patreon. And I got a few buttons here for running some of my custom games, like my streaming stampede game that I made that replicates, you know, that mini game in Pokemon Stadium where you got to like count all the Pokemon when they like run across the screen. I got a few buttons here for controlling that game. Uh, before you guys ask, no, that one's not on Patreon. Maybe one day, I, I just haven't figured out a way where I can share that game with you guys yet. Got a couple other buttons here for running custom channel point predictions and polls. So rather than me having to type slash poll in my chat and then filling out all the fields, I literally just click a button and then it starts a Twitch poll, which saves me a lot of time when I'm streaming. But of course you gotta like the full power of StreamerBot. So anything you can do in StreamerBot, you can access from this deck page. If you got like cool Elgato lights, you can like turn them on and off like inside of OBS, really cool. But keep in mind, these decks are nowhere near as robust as an actual stream deck. So you can't make folders, you can't make switches. It's literally just a basic page. But there's nothing stopping you from making as many decks as you want. You can make a deck that's specifically cut down just for your mods. You don't want them to be able to run your entire computer. But then you can make a deck that's specifically for just you to control, and then you can restrict access to the deck so that only you can control it. If you want to have multiple docks in OBS, you can do that. You can make different docks for different layouts. And while you're adding docks to OBS, you might be thinking, wow, that my OBS sure is complicated now, Nutty. I wish there was a solution to fix that. Lucky for you, I have a video showing exactly how to clean up your OBS docs to make them way easier to manage. So if you're interested in that, you can click on the video up here or don't. I'm not your mom. Have a nice day, guys. You guys keep calling me the, you know, Hampton from Hybrid Calisthenics. You guys keep saying I look like him and now I'm like turning into him. Okay, bye guys.